Sandy works in healthcare. Healthcare claims data is highly complex. I work at Kyber uh, where we work with that data. And it's, it's unique, it's complex. And I would say uh, in the last four or five years, less than four or five hedge funds could probably use this data in its rawest form. It requires a tremendous amount of expertise. Now that's changed with the help of folks of people like on this panel and their processes. But maybe you could talk, Sandy, a little bit about the skills required to manage and use and create productive outputs from these highly complex data. Yeah, sure. Th thanks, Brian. And thank you for including me on this, uh, this panel. I um, I'm going to spend a few seconds just um, reiterating from my perspective what has been what my um, uh, uh, fellow uh, panelists have, have, have brought, have, have mentioned. <clears throat> but um, I'm Sandy Balkin. I'm the Senior Vice President of Strategy and Analytics at uh, Royalty Pharma. We're the largest purchaser of royalties in the pharmaceutical and biotech industry and funder of disruptive medicines. Um, we buy the royalty streams from the inventors of medicines. Uh, so you can, you can, so we consider ourselves a private equity company, uh, but we're also the uh, most diversified pharmaceutical company because we get the most revenue streams, we get revenue streams from the most diverse source of, of products. Now, as, as I was thinking about preparing uh, for this panel, I was thinking about the, first of all, um, I don't think that, um, Oh, so I, I first, I, I spent most of my career uh, building analytics functions at companies like Pfizer, Sanofi, and Banger Ingelheim. Um, built the data science and engineering function at Truist, where we broke the, uh, the car that Chipotle's carne asada launch, because uh, it broke one of our pricing scrapes. It was very exciting for, for, for us. Uh, but I, I don't think that alternative data is only 12 years old, because we've been using data forever. Uh, and as I think about that, the evolution, 25 years ago, a subscription to the New England Journal of Medicine had a positive ROI. Then at Pfizer, um, we relied very heavily on IQVIA, for, formerly known as IMS data. And we had three people sitting in a closed room. All they did all day was SAS SQL accessing a VAX to extract uh, prescription level data for us to analyze. Then we created our own analytic data mart and were able to access that data through SQL. Then claims data started uh, appearing and we had to have a 100 person team in Mumbai just to access this data using various sampling techniques. Then, uh, <coughs> excuse me, um, then that data became more readily available, technology improved, and now I can access the 100 terabytes of claims data that I get every month on my iPad. But it's um, but just because the uh, and I think about what what what, what Kirk said, um, as these data sets become more accessible, um, more sophisticated, uh, the uh, and more people start using them, the alpha, the, the value of 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 building uh, an investment process around these data sets becomes um, less profitable, and you can't just stop reading the New England Journal of Medicine, stop using IQVIA data, stop using claims data. You have to add to those, and those data sets become table stakes. So now at Royalty Pharma, I have to have IQVIA data, epidemiology data, um, claims data, payer data. I have to have, um, we, we heard from the previous panelists about the explosion of biological and computational chemistry data sets. I have to have drug disease interaction data, I have to have um, adverse events databases, and all of these are not only very expensive, uh, but have to be brought in, and they come from different places, and so we have to have data engineers, and data scientists, and epidemiologists to not only curate and stage the data, but also analyze and extract insights. Um, the data that we, and like Kirk, when, when, when he was at um, point 72, we have a fine balance sheet, and if I can say that we are going to uh, make more or better deals with the inclusion of a data set, there's no question that I can have that data set. But it's becoming a lot harder to be able to say that. Right? And uh, there are data sets out there that I would love to have, but I, I can't guarantee that I'm going to be able to uh, justify its purchase and there's going to be a positive ROI. And so my management then says, you can't have it because we have, we do, even though we have a, a fine balance sheet, there are finite resources and we want you focused on 
the value generating activities. On the other side, data providers have their one asset, or very few assets, because it's a very dis uh, discrete, discretized, and fragmented market. Uh, they want to get as much as they can out of their data asset. And they think that what they have is going to be the end all be all. Um, I mean, Brian, Brian and I once were evaluating a, uh, a data company um, that told us that their data set could predict um, recessions. Um, and it clearly couldn't. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> they, they, they were so sure um, that their data could, pre could predict uh, market cycles um, that we couldn't come to uh, equitable terms. And this happens qu quite often. Uh, and I think it's happening more and more where, especially in hedge funds that don't have uh, as much funds as, as some of the, the, the biggies, uh, getting access to the data, creating data science teams, um, you know, so is, is very difficult without being able to guarantee it's going to add to your, to your, uh, to, to your alpha. And so I see this as a, as, as, as a two-sided problem. One is um, being able to ingest, curate, ingest, and analyze data sets, um, but then also from the, da from, the, from the data asset vendors, um, being able to prove, and not just with an N of one, which they all do, they all have this one great example that they're, uh, where the data set would have changed an investment decision, but then the second one is never there, or rarely there. Um, so how do, we, how, how do the data vendors realize that, that they can't sell into us unless, they, unless we can use, get experience with, and show that we can get al alpha out of their data sets? And how do we pay for a vendor's data set with limited hands-on experience and not having the, the, the ability to guarantee that we're going to... S be Sandy, I find it hard to believe that a data vendor would tell you that their uh, data set is way better than it really is. And Sandy, in terms of your AI efforts and what you expect going forward, whether so, it be workflows in your own process or actually AI in healthcare solving health problems. Yeah, so um, there, are, there are a couple things that keep me up at night. Um, one is that there's some information available, a data set available, an analytic available um, that I didn't employ and it could have made or broken a deal. Um, so it was either, either a missed opportunity or a deal or an opportunity that I could have kept us out of. And so um, with the amount of information out there um, now programmatically available in clinical trials, in mortality data, in computational chemistry and biology, in SEC documents, in syndicated reports, um, there's no way um, a, a, a finite set of humans can go through so much information. But yet, that's our job, to, uh, to make sure that any piece of information that could have supported a, de a deal um, or kept us out of a deal is found, understood, and mitigated. And so we're spending um, a lot of our AI efforts in, um, consol in, in mass um, scanning and interpretation of medical um, you know, PubMed, which is where all medical journal um, scientific publications are, um, all medical uh, conference proceedings and posters, all transcripts, um, anywhere where a nugget of information could have been shared by a scientist, a patient, um, an investor, a company that could help us uh, make or break uh, or be more, uh, improve our conviction or reduce our conviction in, in an investment. And uh, I feel like that's, the, that's where we're spending our most time in, in AI to go through and make sure that um, for the first time, we really can find that needle in a haystack if it exists. Great. 